This is Bill Stewart and in this video I'm going to show you how to install PostgreSQL on Windows using SSPI which will allow you to access the PostgreSQL database without using a password. The SSPI is a way uh, that's short for Security Support Provider Interface I believe is what the acronym stands for. It allows PostgreSQL to detect a Windows account logon and map that to a PostgreSQL database user. So in this way we can access the PostgreSQL database using a predefined user account without having to specify its password. Now in order to do this there's a couple of prerequisites. First of all you need a domain service account that already exists. You probably want to set it with password never expires. Secondly the account's going to need the logon as a service user right. So you can see that if you go to your administrative tools and local security policy under user rights assignment log on as a service. Now I have a domain account called xwikidb owner. I named it this because I'm going to use this PostgreSQL database to run the xwiki application. So I called it xwikidb owner and I granted it the log on as a service user right. So that's already set in this case. Lastly, you're going to need permission to update the service principal name attribute of that domain service account. So you probably will need domain admins for that. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we're going to download the PostgreSQL installer package. Go to postgresql.org. And of course, we will go ahead and go to download. and Windows and download the installer. Now in this demonstration I'm going to download version 10 and we'll go to the Windows x86-64, the 64-bit version. I've already got it downloaded. Go to File Explorer and my Downloads directory. and I've already got it downloaded. Now before I just double click to run this installer there's some command line parameters that I need to give to the installer and that's because the wizard interface does not give us the option of specifying these specific options uh, when installing so I'm going to use uh, the command line to actually run the installer. I'm going to copy these uh, command line options and I'm going to open my Windows PowerShell console as administrator so I can run the installer. Go to my downloads directory, type too quickly. You can see the PostgreSQL installer is here, so I'm just going to do my autocomplete Postgre and hit tab. And now I'm going to paste those command line options in and specify them the way that I want. So the first thing I want to do is specify the super user account. I'm going to use the same username as the domain service account. For the domain service account, I need to delete these extra bits here. Use the domain backslash username format for the service account and the service name I'm going to specify PostgreSQL-10 for the version number. So now that I've got my command line set up, go ahead and hit enter. And when you run this uh, PostgreSQL installer, it will install a couple of visual C++ prerequisite packages uh, before the installer wizard appears. So that's completely normal. So we'll see those flash by before the first page of the wizard appears. And there they are. Go to the first page. Hit, go ahead and hit next. We'll choose the default installation directory, Program Files PostgreSQL 10. I'm actually going to deselect PG Admin because I'm going to install that in a separate step and the version that's in the PostgreSQL 10 installer package is out of date. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect PG Admin, which is a, as it says here, a graphical interface for working with PostgreSQL. 
we'll go ahead and deselect that, hit next. I'm actually going to change the data directory to program data. That seems a more sensible installation directory for the database files themselves. Hit next. Now this is where we specify the password and it's actually the password to the service account. So you want to make sure you specify this, the existing domain accounts password for the service account in this uh, space here. Okay, port 5432 is the standard port PostgreSQL TCP port. I'm going to leave the default locale. And the post install, excuse me, the pre-installation summary will show the data directory, the program directory, the port, the database super user account name, and the service account, and also the service name. So those are the set the way that we want. We'll go ahead and click next, and then hit next to initiate the installation. Okay, it's initializing the data files, that's the data directory. Okay, it's starting the database service, PostgreSQL-10 service that we created. Okay, the installation is now completed. I do not need the stack builder, so I'm going to un unselect that option and hit finish. So now we've actually installed the PostgreSQL uh, uh, database onto the machine. If you look under your administrative tools and services, go to your services applet, and we'll look in there and we'll scroll down, scroll down and you'll see the PostgreSQL database service is running. And if we look at the properties, you will see that it's configured to log on using the domain service account, which is exactly what we want. So that's good. Because we need to make some configuration changes to enable SSPI though, I'm going to go ahead and stop the database service at this time. And I'm going to change to that data directory. So as I mentioned in the steps here, we actually need to update two files, pg underscore ident dot conf and pg underscore hba dot conf to allow the SSPI logon. So to do that, I'm going to make a backup copy of the pg ident file and I'm going to open it in notepad go to the end of the file this file allows us to specify the mapping between the system username that is the domain name that the SSPI logon sees which will look like username at domain and the username in the XWiki, excuse me, in the PostgreSQL database itself, which is just the username. The SSPI tag at the beginning of the line will be used in the pg underscore hba.conf file that it's going to specify that tag as to read this file to get the mapping. So we're going to go ahead and save this file. We'll make a backup copy of the PGHBA. And open it in Notepad. Okay, go down to the bottom of the file. These initial entries are defaults that the installer creates. I'm actually going to comment all of them out because we want to use SSPI logon. So all of these, oops, I missed one there. We'll comment these uh, host lines out and create our own. And we specify the database, which is all, the username, which is the super user, 
from where? Localhost. And how, how will the logon work? SSPI. And what mapping? The mapping from the PG HBA, excuse me, the PG underscore ident.conf file. We're going to create two of these. One for IP version 4, and one for, here's the one for IP version 6. Okay, now we're specifying, we've commented out all of the lines, the defaults, and we are going to exclusively use SSPI to log on to this database. Now, of course, if you need to allow connections from other computers, you would put you know, a host name or an IP address uh, of that remote computer. You can create more users in your XWiki database, more mappings, etc. But we're just using, in this example, to run this application, we have one super user account and we're going to use it to log on using SSPI as specified in the configuration here. So we're going to go ahead and close this file and save it. Now we can start the XWiki, or excuse me, the PostgreSQL, keep saying XWiki, the PostgreSQL database service itself. Okay. We should see it. Yep, and it's up and running. So we're good to go there. Now we actually want to install the PG admin GUI tool. I'm going to go back to my downloads directory directory. And I'm going to install the PG admin. All right. Now, if I were to double click it from the Explorer, I would get a prompt to log on as administrator. But since I've launched it from the PowerShell window that's already running as administrator, it didn't prompt me for that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. I'm just going to simplify the install directory to just PG admin. You don't have to do that, of course. I just prefer the shorter name and the program group name or start menu folder, just PG admin. Don't have to change that if you don't want to. And run the install. I'm not going to run PG admin at this time, so I'm going to uncheck that box and hit finish. Now going back to our instructions, we actually need, uh, I did the install of the PG admin, we actually need to update the service principal name attribute of the service account. And what we do there is we run the set SPN command. I'm going to list the, the existing service principal names set on that service account, set SPN-L, and you can see it just says registered service principal names and then no further output, so there aren't any set. So I'm actually going to use the command here, set SPN-S, Postgres, uppercase, and then the fully qualified domain name of the server. Oops, that's the username. Okay, so set SBN S, Postgres slash FQDN of server name, and then the account name, the domain service account name. So it says that it updated the object, so we should be able to run the dash L and see that service principal name set. And there it is set there. So we actually want to, because we just changed that, we want to restart. Restart the database service.
and it's running under the service account and the service principal name is set. Now the last step that I want to do is just demonstrate that logon by using the PG admin tool while logging on using the database owner account. So I'm going to go ahead and log off from this account. I'm going to log on using the database account. So now we're logged on as the database owner account. I'm actually going to scroll down to the PG admin that took it a second to populate there. It was just installed. And run the PG admin tool. The PG admin uses the web browser as its user interface. So that's going to initialize. And then under our servers tree, it will auto add the current local server. Double click on that one. Now it's going to prompt for a password, but because we're already logged on using this account and the mapping is set in the Postgres configuration files, we can just click OK and it will log us on to the server. And we will see that it's connected to the PostgreSQL server. So I hope that this video tutorial was helpful to assist you in installing PostgreSQL on Windows and set it up to use SSPI logon.